Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Holes Special Channel and a mechanical version of Random Links. Well today we're going to be kind of talking a little bit about bearing quality. Um, I realize that we all can't be buying top-notch machinery and thus you know have it ready to run right out of the box and so we're kind of forced to buy um, stuff from oh, the empire out of the middle, shall we say, and um, one of the problems you encounter is the bearings. Um, one, they don't run around. Two, the metallurgy in them is abysmally poor. And uh, three, they just don't live very long. Here we have a mulcher. It came to me with less than 20 hours of runtime on it. And as you can see right here, this shaft doesn't turn. It should, it just, you know, granted I got the the one side of the bearing, out, you know, the one bearing out of this side over here out of it already, and it still should turn fairly easily, but it doesn't. And this, uh, I'll show you some pictures here of the old bearings. This one that came out of here uh, was, eh, you know, it's usable, so let's put it that way. Uh, but the other one over there, it uh, overheated. It's chewed through two sets of um, V-belts already, even though this thing should, by all rights, uh, just, you know, live for another, you know, two, three years before you have uh, any kind of mechanical problems with it. But um, anyway... The bearing quality that goes into the Chinese made machinery is so abysmally poor. My recommendation to you is when you buy a Chinese made uh, machine or machine tool, tear it apart, pull the bearings out of it, and buy uh, you know bearings from a reputable manufacturer like SKF or Fisher or uh, Timken, whoever, ABC. Is, is the is the phrase to remember anything but Chinese um, today we're going to be putting in Asahi bearings in um, the, the you know they hail from Japan uh, the Japanese bearings are generally pretty good so um, these are a kind of bearing that has to be able to flex with the machine or with the shaft I should say because when this thing is working this shaft is deflecting quite a bit just depending on you know how uh, Uh, how deep the the mulch is. Um, I'm not sure if this thing is designed to actually go into the ground or not uh, from the looks of it and everything. It looks to be like it's just supposed to hover above the ground and just shred the, the vegetation that's on top. So anyway, but these things do they vibrate, they flex, and so the bearing has to be able to absorb that and We'll take a look at some of the other shortcuts that they took, like right here on the end of the stub shaft here. Here's a picture. As you can see, the bearing spun on the shaft, uh, even though the bearing itself is still uh, usable. They also didn't put any divots in the in the uh, end of the shaft for the grub screws that uh, that hold the bearing on the shaft and hold the shaft in place. Um, it's either in order to keep the shaft from pulling out, you know, keep the the, the bearing and, and the whole thing from from. I don't know. I, I'm guessing it's it's just to allow the shaft some movement laterally inside the inside the housing. But as you can see, it's spun. Um, you got two different rings. So we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do with this. Also, they didn't put any copper paste on this to you know, anti-seize 
in order to facilitate removal of the bearing when it does decide to seize up. Um, these bearings down here are similar, but again, different. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get this thing all worked over and I'll bring you back when uh, the project's completed and show you guys what was done. Again, we're just swapping bearings, putting new belts on it and uh, getting this thing ready to rock and roll again, so get it back into service. So with that, we'll bring you back when uh, the project's done. Well, we got the shaft all back in on this thing. And as you can see, it turns a whole lot easier than what it did. Uh, granted, I mean, even with one bearing out, it should have been able to turn, uh, you know, somewhat, and it didn't do it at all. But uh, anyway, we finally got it back together. Uh, now the only thing left to do is, is put the belts on it. Um, and then, and then uh, replace the tensioner. Uh, I'm not sure how this tensioner is supposed to work. I guess I'll find out. Um, the reason this thing came to me was because of the tensioner. It was uh, the old one was bent. Here's a picture. As you can see, it didn't hold up too well. Um, it was just undersized for. The power that the engine off the PTO or the, exerts on the PTO and the and the shaft and everything, and so they they also over tightened it and uh, ruined the bearings in it. And again, the belts were chewed up, but that wasn't the cause of the belts getting chewed up. It was actually the bearings going bad. So anyway, that's uh, a wrap for this project. Finish cleaning out the grass here on the idler on the back end and uh, get this thing turned back over and ready to rock and roll for the guy that owns it. Hopefully it'll give him some service now. At first I was thinking these blades were supposed to dig into the dirt, but uh, I guess they're not. These uh, guides here, of course, here's a picture of how straight these are. As you can see, <laughs> um, yeah, typical Chinese stuff. Yeah. Welder and or grinder and paint makes them the welders they ain't. But uh, anyway, these things are all crooked and instead of flat. And uh, but these are the the depth gauges anyway, or the the you know the depth setters, so that the thing can't dig into the dirt or something like that. Um, it's supposed to probably just chop up forbs and stuff like that. How it's supposed to act in grass, I don't know. I'm guessing there's going to be different blades for grass. Um, if anybody in the viewership has any info on these mulchers and the way they're supposed to work, uh, by all means, put it in the comment section below because these blades are, um, I think, 80 millimeters wide, uh, 75. Yeah, about 75 millimeters, which is roughly about three inches. So these are three inch blades. I'm thinking that for grass, they would want something a, diff a little different, guessing. But if anybody has, you know, better info on that, put it in the comment section below, it'd be appreciated. So that way, um, if a person does buy one of these things, at least you're better informed if you happen to see it. Well, hello, Hornet. Big old fatty Hornet swirling around here. Anyhow. Um, that pretty much wraps up this project. There's some stills here at the end, you know, where we put anti-seize on the, on the ends of the shafts and on the, you know, everywhere on the screws. Um, set the depth right on the uh, ring here because the, uh, the screws went in so far and then they stripped. Here's a picture right here. And so you can see there was a few little details that had to be resolved in order to get this thing put back together correctly and make it run. So anyway, uh, check out the stills at the end of the, at the, end of the video. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, critiques, suggestions, or ideas, by all means, put them in the comment section below. Put a little traffic in there, if nothing else, just to say hi. Um, helps the videos in the ratings. Or, you know, there's always debate on how the ratings, uh, you know, in the, in the algorithms work in YouTube. But um, a little bit of uh, uh, comment traffic also definitely helps the video. So anyway, um, if you have any other 
thoughts, comments, critiques, and suggestions, by all means, let us let us know. And uh, with that, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you all again soon in the next video.